What is up, guys, and uh, welcome back to OWL by the Numbers, your one stop spot for all things Fantasy Overwatch League. I am your host, Humbly Drunk, and tonight we have episode 37. It is opening weekend, a big draft week. Uh, we've got updates in regards to all of the Fantasy Overwatch League platforms. We have our aggregate ranks out of the way now, and it's time to compare them against what the draft buff pick positions have been for said players. And of course, you know, we'll be taking a look at some of this year's sleeper picks in regards to the drafts to try to get you a bit more draft ready for this week, which should be a hectic week across the board. So before we jump into the agenda for tonight and introduce you to my co-hosts, let me just take a moment to thank everyone who is joining us tonight live on Twitch. And of course, I have to thank all of our repeat listeners out there. So joining me tonight, as always, are my co-hosts. Uh, Ramses will more than likely be joining us mid-show, which is all right. Uh, but as per usual, with me yet again, fresh, well this time fresh off of the Chief Super Bowl win, which you'll probably be able to tell based off of his voice, is Boomer Bob. Bob, welcome to the show, friend. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, my my voice actually is weird. It's like a delayed effect because I was okay last night, and then today I woke up and felt like the hangover skipped a day. It was really weird, but man... It was wild. I was screaming. I was I was yelling. I might have cried a little bit. Full disclosure, but you know it's it's. I've never seen it in my entire life. I've never even been to a Super Bowl. So this was. I still keep pinching myself, thinking like maybe I'm still dreaming, but yeah, pretty. I'm pretty excited. But football's over unless you're gonna watch the XFL. <laughs> so we're mm -hmm. here to talk Overwatch League, and you know. If one of my teams can win a Super Bowl, maybe the other one can win a championship. Burn blue, baby. You mean the <laughs> toilet bowl? <laughs> that was a great reply to my tweet. Uh, uh, that that cracked They're me no up. longer the dumpster fires now. They're the toilet fires. <laughs> <laughs> the toilet bowl fires. And of course, you know, we can't forget about Big Head Ed, who is uh, rocking a new jersey today, Ed. Welcome. Yes, I got my custom Gladiators Ednar jersey. Uh, Gladi Edators, as Spider's Spider pointed it out. Glad Edators. Glad Edators. Um, hi, I'm excited. I'm getting stoked. Uh, you know, we have the Overwatch League this, this weekend kind of chaos ensuing mm -hmm. uh, to be to say the least like we still don't know all the rosters we don't know who's announcing we don't know shit we should have known a month ago but you know we do know we got hero pools next month <laughs> yes yes we have they're like well we're not going to tell you what's coming up this week mm -hmm. but here's what's coming in a month mm -hmm. <laughs> enjoy uh but yeah we're gonna do the ever important you know you know, top five in each position and sleepers and oh, as Ramses is joining us. As Ramses is switching. joining us. Um <laughs> he said he was gonna be fifteen minutes late. He's he now twenty six minutes late. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, and he's muted even. You can't even talk. Uh so no, I'm I'm very excited for all this. Um uh let's see. I am coming out with something special this week, Overwatch Fantasy related. Mwahaha. Oh, God. Coming to a website near you. So, you know, keep that in mind. Website, Follow the Twitter sphere. Oh, there he is. What tangent were you going on, Ed? Uh, how <laughs> you said you were going to be 15 minutes late and you're 26 minutes late. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You can blame the 78 freeway being shut down for three stops. I don't care about LA traffic. <laughs> blame it on traffic. the rain. Ramsey's late again. San Diego traffic, my friend. Anyway. <laughs> Have you ever been on time for, like, anything? <laughs> Everything that's not this show, yes. I don't believe it. Yeah, I, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I'm pretty sure you're even late to meet me when we met at the Overwatch League. I'm assuming <laughs> first time. you were even... Like if Again. we got if we got Mama Ramsey's on the phone, uh, we would be like, "Was he a late pregnancy?" Hey, well, no, if you was, come out if late, you want Mama Mama Ramsey, she did guest on the Al recap. She was a surprise <laughs> guest in. when Ramsey's was a guest. Mama so. Ramsey's. So we need to we need confirmation that you did not come out early. 
Mm-hmm. No, I did come out early, and I was pre- I was also a C-section baby because of my giant head. Oh, so they forced <laughs> you out. It wasn't like you didn't I come mean... early. They forced you out early. You would have come out like a week late. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it was better than me because I was because of my giant ass. So uh... hey, so <laughs> hey, oh, but that playing... that's the same as my head. They're the same thing. Okay, if, sorry. Uh, mm-hmm. If if you were had the uh, over <laughs> watch like by the numbers, you know. Scorecard, who had, or the bingo sheet, who had C-sections and late pregnancies, because you win. (laughs) Uh, Far and few between on that front, but you know, despite as entertaining as this is, we do need to talk about Fantasy Overwatch League, so uh, just general fantasy updates for you guys for all of the platforms. On highnoon.gg, they do have their Pick'em Leagues up. Unlimited leagues are also up, and of course, you could draft via the standard leagues, uh, and they did add the featured league, so whether it is for your favorite Overwatch League podcast, your favorite fantasy OWL podcast, obviously this one, uh, we do have one up there, but it's under Overwatch League Network. Just don't join any of them, but I know some of the Overwatch League teams have them up there as well. Uh, We are going to be giving away prizes on ours. Uh, so keep that in mind. Not all of them will be doing that for the featured leagues. Uh, for draft buff, they did note that fantasy matchups are going to last two weeks, and this is due to the recent OWL match cancellations in regards to the China homestand events. So keep that in mind. Um, I don't know if all of the platforms have been looking at that and will try to tweak scheduling to adjust uh, due to, you know, the coronavirus uh, issues taking place in China. Uh, but for now, just note that it is primarily for draft buff only. Uh, so- Fantasy OWL's like, thank God I did daily. <laughs> He's like, I don't got to deal with any of this. Right, and speaking of daily Fantasy Overwatch League, matches should be going live here uh, either today or tomorrow. Foul noted that it would be 24 to 48 hours max. Uh, he had made some big back-end changes that delayed some of the deliverables, so he just wanted to make sure uh, that the DFS is all good and running, and then all of the matches will open up. Because I guess, like, the matches weren't actually shown in the API, which is how yeah. he would normally be added them to daily, so there was a little bit of a hiccup on that end, uh, but he's hoping to have that up here very, very so, soon. So what you're saying is the API is screwing with us, before the season even begins this year. I know. All of these guys <laughs> that run these different sites, I could just see them being like, are you bleeping kidding me right now? Like mm-hmm. if the All APIs... the work they're putting into it, going up to it, and then this drops, you know, real close to the start of the season, scrambling around. I just feel bad for all those guys, and mm-hmm. thanks for your extra work. Like two months from now, API is still broke. I, could, I <laughs> wouldn't even blame them being like, Screw this, I'm out. Like, I am I'm not going to go play League anymore. of Legends, guys. Yeah, yeah like, I'm <laughs> going to go, I'm going to go watch something not on YouTube. <laughs> oh, wait, that's what everyone's doing anyway. Mm-hmm. Awkward. Or just streaming side, in China. Side note, why is everybody so butthurt about uh, well, going to YouTube when we act like we don't spend at least two hours a day on YouTube anyway? Their viewership so far has been shit. Not really. If you look at the actual numbers from League of Legends, it's surprising how oh. close YouTube is. Oh, okay. League of Legends, but not... You're comparing Blizzard. it to the highest point that you possibly well, can in this case, Bob, and I, I will note, even if you compare two it was different still Blizzard titles, though. even if you compare COD League when it was advertised like an hour or two before, the average was only around 50k. Heck, Hearthstone... Okay, Hearthstone didn't even advertise, which is something that Overwatch League has been lacking here as of well in regards to the broadcast deal and the move off of Twitch over to YouTube. Uh, There were a lot of times where the Arlington Masters Tour was only at like 4K. Yeah, well, that's like, that's what I'm worried about the most is the advertising and the ease of of access to the actual stream. But I mean, it's it's going to be better quality. That is just a fact. Mm -hmm. But like, I mean, if Google helps them out and pushes anyone that's watching Overwatch, like any like anybody who's watching your Overwatch, you know, the 150,000 people that watch those videos every 
you know, e every other day, if they're pushing mm -hmm. that link right there, I mean, it could it could get a lot of people. Right. Are you talking about like just having it in like just clickable or is it like a recommended channel after a video? So yeah, to speak? recommended channel and possibly even autoplay after a video. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if they'll go to that extent. But if they did, it could be huge. Absolutely. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, I know all of us are kind of cautiously optimistic. You know, we all know how accessible YouTube is a lot easier to, you know, get on your smart TVs, mobile devices, all of that good stuff, as opposed to how it was on Twitch. Uh, but we're just going to have to wait and see. Hopefully, you know, even with Earables, the casual viewership has a really good opportunity to kind of skyrocket based off of the fact that we're just not going to be seeing the same thing. And, you know, based off of what, you know, we've heard about, you know, the scrim bucks lately, it seems like the the meta is kind of shattered right now and everyone's bringing different takes. So I am anxious to see how that is going to play out. But we're here after what had been a, a couple of busy weeks for us, kind of like behind the scenes, because we'd been working on some fantasy Overwatch League aggregate rankings. And, you know, we reached out to... Uh, KG from Draft Buff to pull some of the numbers for us. Uh, and the numbers that we're going to be talking about in regards to the average draft rank uh, is from around a thousand drafts that have happened on that platform. Uh, so keep that in mind. But I, I, we do want to thank everyone again who had helped contributed to these fantasy Overwatch League aggregates over these past few weeks. And you know we've uh, we've been in pretty good company there, Ramses. Definitely, uh, I know just with other fantasy Overwatch podcasts like uh, D Hulking for Fantasy Overwatch Underground put a lot of work into the rankings as well. Um, your favorite tank main, our favorite tank main, Booger with picking good ones with Booger put some work in there and then heebie-jeebie and tip Jamma from foul play also did a lot of work just kind of all helping all of us stack up our rankings into getting the best aggregate possible yeah so for those that haven't seen it basically what we did is we ranked oh. yep sorry and goopy noopy from a game house as well also mm -hmm. got in his stuff at the last minute two sheets <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah, that that was interesting. He was a late addition. I was like, well, I saw him like producing fantasy OWL content. I was like, F it, I'll just reach out. And sure enough, he uh, he sent some ranks over to us as well. Uh, so for those that haven't looked at our aggregate ranks as of yet, what we did is we had eight of us ranking the top 30 tank players, the top 30 uh, support players, as well as the top 40 uh, damage players. And then we averaged them all out. Uh, we also did a sheet for, like, the combined rankings, which was more just, I just wanted to see what it would look like. It wouldn't necessarily mirror, uh, like, what we would think the average position would be in a grand scheme of things. But, you know, it led to some, uh, some pretty interesting stuff. So tonight, we are going to be looking at the top five at each rank. And then we'll be taking a look at who the draft... Uh, the drafted players are in regards to the top five at each position. And we'll kind of see some similarities between our ranks and where people are actually drafting them in regards to what role rank they are. So, Bob, let's go ahead and start with who we had within the top five for the tank players out there. So how do you want me to do this? So I so the first rank that I see is our rank, correct? And then the role rank, the, the stuff to the right is the actually what happened on draft buff. right so i think the best thing okay. to do is we'll go through our top five and then we can mirror it and uh you know you can just read off based on the role rank i know it's not exactly like in the actual like one through five on the right but it does denote like what rank each thing is okay so you would do all all of ours first yes. and then do theirs yeah, gotcha we'll do ours all right first. So we d we had as number one uh, for then this is for tanks San F San Francisco Shock Choyobin. Uh, number two we had Vancouver Janu. Number three we had Philadelphia Fury. Number four we had Gladiators and Space, and number five we had Hangzhou Spark Ria. And it was actually was actually pretty close uh our 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 rank one was 
was Ch- was Choi Obed also, but where Janu was ranked two in uh, on draft buff, our rank was ranked three, and Fury was ranked two, but Space and Rhea, or no, Space lined up, but then we actually had Mono as rank rank five and not Rhea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was kind of interesting. Like, we actually saw main tank getting drafted uh, fairly early in regards to the pool for a lot of the players on draft buff. Uh, And, you know, looking at the average pick rates, it varies anywhere from 10.88 as high as 28.37 in that fifth slot uh, in regards to mono. And I know there's been kind of like a lot of discussion on, you know, what tank meta we're going to be seeing if there is even going to be a meta at this point. Uh, but does Mono kind of strike you guys as one of the more prolific main tanks in regards to, like, point earning? Or do you, would you value someone that maybe has a little bit more of an aggressive play style, similar to, like, what we saw out of someone like, you know, Gushui or, you know, Fisher this past season? Well, I mean, all I can think of is, the like, the reason Bay Tanks went higher is because people were thinking Sigma. Now, mm-hmm. if we got this, you know, if we got the information about Hero Pools, you know, weeks ago, then, like, these probably would have been a lot different. That's my take on it. Well, and I think when you look at the main tank role, like, people have doubts. Like, people can be a little bit uncertain as far as, like, a starting situation with, like, Gesture and Marvel and Soul. Or like say like your supers and Smurfs in San Francisco, but Mono's a guy who's a rock who's always going to be there and doesn't have any competition. Mm-hmm. I do know personally from as somebody who owned Mono a couple of different times last year, um, even for main tanks, his point totals weren't particularly high. So I think it's more of like I think it's more of his name and his reputation kind of preceding the actual point totals. Yeah, I think a lot of it has to do with. Um people just not really realizing what's going on and they're taking like mono may be one of the best tanks in the league but that doesn't mean he's good fantasy wise like right in in our rankings we didn't even have him in the top 20 tank wise um you know he, like we only had two like basically if you ask any of us like okay who here would take no fantasy wise over mono Probably everyone. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, basically, we would all take off tanks over main tanks. And it's mostly, yeah. It's a simple reason that blocking does not count fantasy wise because we that's not a stat yet. Um, So that's why they they score so much less. Uh, And I think, like, Ramsey was right. It's more of a, a name situation. It is. It's a it's a name situation. You're you're drafting someone on a name basis. Um so yeah, I I yeah. I Well it just across the board, like you know, like not to give too much of a spoiler, but no new players were really picked besides seeing like one, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So it's so you're definitely on to something with that name thing. Absolutely, and uh, that that one is a support player, uh, and you know, I, I I I have to say, like for the most part, just looking at our top fives at each rank, like we we got a vast majority of them right in regards to just namesake. Uh, maybe like the actual position ranks, uh, as, like compared to where people are drafted, them might differentiate a little bit. Uh, some players more so than others, but for the most part, you know, we got 13 out of the 15 in regards to top five at each rank, so I'm pretty pretty happy about that, so hats off to all of our contributors on that end, but... Self-high five! Yes! Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so on that note, let's look at the support line and, and see how things are shaking up, because, you know, we do have a rookie uh, in this class that did make the top five at uh, our aggregates as well as the draft ranks. All right, uh, so on this one, we started off one to five. We went with the Gladiators, Shaz, uh, probably the most consistent support player in the league. Uh, next up, we went with the San Francisco Shots, Violet. Uh, three, we went with Jonak. Uh, I think the reason a lot of us didn't have Jonak higher up 
was for the simple fact that, you know, Zenyatta is not as prevalent as one might be, so he just doesn't seem to be as dominant, but still phenomenal. Uh, and then you have, at number four, you have the shoe train. Shoo, shoo. Uh, and then at five, you have the rookie in alarm, uh, who, mm, 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 mm. Uh, who is a rookie but has the name. Because, like, all we've been hearing about is alarm for two He's... years definitely got a lot of hype yeah like he's crazy like korean flex support player but he played in na and was a part of the most like dominant worthy uh you know contenders teams ever in mm -hmm. fusion university so yeah we went so shaz violet joe jonak shoo shoo and alarm uh and we had the top five correct as far as draft buff but just different orders. So in drafting wise, Jonak is number one. Uh, no surprise there. People draft Jonak on name alone, mm -hmm. and it's not. And, and he is not a bad name draft. Like I'm not going to fault anyone who takes Jonak one. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, you have Violet. Exactly where we had him. Right. Number three, this is where I'm. I'm slightly confused. So Shu, they have at number three. So. Oh, no, you fin finish the list. I'll talk okay, about she was three, alarm four, and then Shaz down at number five. Like, that is drastic for Shaz. Like, Shaz should not be the fit number five flex support. I don't know about anybody else's leagues, but I think the league that, the th that at least Totem and Ed and I were all in, it pretty much went either Shaz, Violet, or Violet Shaz. I think the reason she was that high up is because we got to see that one stat about him being top three in like damage eliminations and the healing mm -hmm. in all four stages get propagated everywhere. And I think that really stuck in people's heads when it came down to draft time. So I think. No, I, I mean, I get it. It's just Shaz is, I would take personally, I would take Shaz over Violet, not because I think Violet's, you know, not as good. It's Shaz is just more consistent. Right. Mm -hmm. Like Shaz is like, the rock like not like Can you smell what he's cooking not that rock and <laughs> not alcatraz rock like he is the foundation of that team really and he's the one who's going to be the most consistent he's going to be a he's going to be one of the top scorers every week like if you get him you plug him and then you just are like all right i'm good yeah i i do want to note that uh based not off note the of take. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I do well regardless in regards to the draft pick rate here uh Jonek and Violet are both first rounders uh, and they are two of three first rounders technically if we're just basing things off of a 10 player league that are on this you know 15 men list uh Jonek is first overall at 4.07 uh, Violet not too far behind at 6.04, so not too much of a differential there. But, I mean, even going from roll rank 2 at this uh, and then jumping to Shu, who has been drafted third in most cases, you're looking at an early round 2 pick at the average pick of 12.6. But basically, all of your top flex sports, like the top 5 that we have ranked, are all going, you know, within those first two rounds or even, you know, mid-second at the very latest. Yeah, it's, again, <laughs> start drafting right, people. <laughs> I, I, like, I hate to say this, but just start drafting right. Uh, but support players are probably your most important. Over, over flex tanks, over damage players, like, support is probably, consider the support players the running backs of your fantasy football team. So you, I'll get made fun of in a sec for this, but, like, don't do what I did and aim God? draft your flex. No, aim God's fine. <laughs> um, don't do what I did where I think in one, like another league that we're doing within like some people with the network, uh, I waited past the first round to draft reflex support. And by doing that, they were all gone. By the time that snake draft came back around, I got stuck with Lastro and I don't remember who the other one was, but like flex support needs to be your top priority because if you do miss out on those first like 
let alone like through the first like six to eight like good ones, it's rough after that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So uh, on that note, uh, let's go ahead and move into the damage dealers where, you know, they're... I'm not too surprised by the one exception that wasn't in our top five that made it into the average pick rate top five. Uh, but, you know, for the most part, you know, we were pretty close on this one as well. Probably the closest we had been uh, in regards to, like, rank by rank uh, when you just compare the two. Definitely. So our list started with uh, Profit as our number one DPS, followed by Erster. Hawksall, Corey, and then Carpe at number five. Uh, and then when we go into the actual draft data, except there's a couple different changes, but for mostly we're on the money. Profit's still the easy number one. I think you're going to have a very hard time getting anybody to change their mind on that. Um, Erster and Hawksall were switched. So we have the Hawksall at number two, Erster at number three, which makes sense. Erster's still... I think there are still people who doubt Erster, but mm -hmm. I think there are people like us who like drafted Erster way high. There are some like I've been in a draft where we drafted Erster as the number one DPS, but it's it's not it's not unusual. Uh, I am surprised to see that Corey was not in the top five for here when we saw Sinatra come in as like when you look at the draft buff data. Uh, Sinatra was your overall average like was your average number four pick. Which is a little surprising because we know how much success San Francisco had with like the spinning rotation of DPS players at the end of the season. You would think that he won't get that much time. But after that, Carpe was at number five, just like we thought. So a little bit of a change. I am I'm still just I'm surprised about the Sinatra pick. I feel like we've seen enough footage to know he's not getting near the amount of playtime that Corey is. Yeah, yeah I, I like it's one of those things where I mean we just don't with the with the San Francisco shock you have what rascal uh architect striker Sinatra you could yes. tell me it's his birthday okay, so, you I mean you gotta shout him out come on okay yeah see I think people oh sorry go ahead well, I was gonna say you could tell anyone that there's any combination of like two of those players and you'd be like yeah that will work like, nobody would be surprised if you went with any form of lineup, and that's what scares me about Sinatra. Well, see, I think, like, what I'm seeing here is the, you know, the the analyst choices, which is all which is all of us except me, <laughs> but, uh, because I didn't get mine in in time, but I would have been very similar to these, and what it is, is all of ours are guaranteed plays every week. It's mm -hmm. almost like it's very, there's not a big chance they're going to get bent. Sinatra's so super, super popular, but there is a very good chance that he doesn't play. I, I don't see, like, I always see Erster playing, but Sinatra mm -hmm. switching in and out. Yeah. Like, this is another case where none of us had Sinatra, even in, uh, was, I think, our number 14. Yeah, I'm, I actually have the, uh, cheat sheet up that draft buff had uh, mm -hmm. and i'm pretty sure d hulky was the one who put these together and just looking at where he had sinatra on here on their website sinatra was listed as the 11th uh best dps option yeah it's just it's one of those he's the safest of the san francisco shock dps players to take mm -hmm. i will say that and and not because he he is necessarily the best but with this hero pool now, what happens if Zarya becomes popular that week? Well, then Sinatra moves over to the tank line and starts at, at Zarya. Potentially. So, like, he, he, he potentially. Like, I would probably put him on Zarya over Choi Boy. You know what I mean? Because we know Sinatra is already one of the best Zaryas in the league. Mm -hmm. So, like, he has the potential to play more due to his utility on Zarya. And I think that's what moves him up. I don't think it's really the skill as much. Not saying he's not skilled, but there's three other equally as skilled players. Yeah, the skill doesn't matter. Team. What, what matters more is who has the most playing time. Mm -hmm. It is so. definitely playing time greater than skill. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Yeah, so on that note, we are expecting a ton of drafts to happen throughout this week, headed into open end weekend. Uh, so just as a reminder, guys, the games are on Saturday and Sunday, uh, kicking off at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, so while I know all of us still have drafts to do this week, I'm sure many of you do as well, whether it is just drafting for the first time or drafting your umpteenth league at this point. Uh, so one of the one of the key things to really look at here is those mid to late round players uh, that you can look to pick up late that will far exceed expectations, whether it is, you know, where we have them ranked in our aggregates, you know, maybe like what the average rank position would be via draft buff or even where they have them ranked. Who are some of the players that you guys are looking to draft late to kind of swing the pendulum in your favor? And, you know, we could either do this. Uh, you know, kind of position by position, or, you know, you guys can just say the first things that are coming to your mind. And let me, let me throw this one to you. I, uh, for me, like I'll just, I have one at each position, so I'm just going to do this. So, uh, on the tank line, uh, fantasy wise, Hanbin, uh, from Paris. And, and the reason I say that is I don't think people are sleeping on him as a player, mm -hmm. but he's falling just a tad in the drafts because he's sitting out week one. Uh, because he's not of age, but then he'll become of age. So then he'll be playing after that. But I mean, Hanbin came over from in the Element Mystic group, you know, to, to come play there, and uh, he's real good. They signed Smex, but Smex is a one week filler at this point. Uh, so uh, Hanbin would be my middle of the road. I mean, by middle of the road, you'll probably have to take him in like the fourth. Uh, maybe fifth round, perhaps. Uh, as far as support goes, I think uh, one that a lot of people are sleeping on is Repel. Yeah. Uh, Repel is, I think, the clear-cut, you know, uh, main, like, flex support on the team over Raucous at this point. So I think Repel, and, and he's not one of those, he's one of those uh, supports you can get end of the third round maybe beginning of the fourth round, if you really want to risk it. So I think Repel is a great, um, you know, and, you know, and flex support tier. And the other one is I'm going to go with Yaki from the Florida Mayhem. Um, I think, you know, people are like, Sire player, Sire player, Sire player. Well, you know what? Yaki is probably their best DPS book. Um when it all boils down to it. And I, I, I think he's worthy of being in your starting lineup. He should be uh, in your starting lineup as a DPS player. Uh, maybe not as your number one DPS, but he's 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 better than a lot of the, I think, uh, of the DPS players that are going above him. I think he's better than Share 4. I think he's probably better than Sinatra. Maybe even KSF, Birdring, Ding. Like, I would probably take a flyer on Yaki over them at this point. Putting together some sleepers in my head, there's one that I'm pretty sure of and one I would like to throw up to you guys. The one I'm sure on would be Fitz because, in my opinion, Fitz, Fitz puts up a good amount of points, but he's going to be later in the draft just because a lot of people don't have that same name recognition they have for other players with him. And even then, like, he was hanging around to, like, fifth round in our drafts that we've done. And you put him aside profit, you're going to be like, he's going to be able to do pretty much whatever he wants on that DPS line. So I think he's a very solid DPS too. If you can pick him up. The one I want to put up to you guys is what do we think here? Like, okay, hear me out. What is our ceiling for Brucen at this point? Well, we, we had him really low in the tank ranks. Uh, we had him 28th overall. That was another one that I was eyeing and Boston, it's hard to tell, like, what, which, I don't want to do air quotes, garbage team will be very fruitful in regards to fantasy this offseason, because we always have players or teams in general that seem to outperform what they do, at least on the stage. Uh, and, you know, for me, it just comes down to whether or not Mufin is going to be coming in and actually starting at that spot, or if... Uh, Brucen is going to be in, in that position. I honestly don't know at this point, but I'm very cautious about Boston in general. Uh, I know at least in some of the drafts that we've done, a lot of people have been eyeing, not necessarily taking like someone like Jerry, 
But you know, we we keep trying to to make that uh, like a pick that people are are, are looking at, and that's definitely uh, uh, I, it's not going to be like a homer pick, but like I I feel like a lot of people are just kind of sleeping on Jerry in particular, or just anyone outside of you know color hex on that DPS line. Uh, but you know, Brucin is probably going to be sticking around for for quite some time in the drafts, and I wouldn't be surprised if people don't really start looking Boston's way on that front until like round seven or even round eight. I know I got him as like one of the last picks in our draft, and then I was trying to remember the other one. I'm I'm pretty high on Lastro because I've heard a lot of good things, but also that's what happens when you forget to draft a flex support till like round three. And then you try and talk <laughs> yourself into it being a great pick. Yeah, like, oh no, it'll this is good. steal of the draft. <laughs> it'll be good. It'll be good. I pro. So, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. You got anything, Bob? Yeah. Uh... And shout out to Frito from your Overwatch for reminding me of this player, but I think you can get Who Are You super cheap. And we all remember Who Are You may tricked me into thinking Zachary was an awesome DPS. <laughs> so if, if he could do that, then uh I mean I think he could do anything like Superman. And I bet and I bet you can get him super late. And then I'll give you a Homer pick. Homer pick Dallas Crimzo. Shocked. You can, you I am get him shocked. super cheap too. So Considering... those are the ones again. I would give you a tank, but to be quite honest, I have no clue who I'm even taking first for tank because it's so up in the air now. And with pools, it's even worse now to try and figure out what I want. And then huh, I, don't, I have no clue. Mm hmm. Another one that like uh, a lot of people are sleeping on. I know in our twelve man league, it, he lasted forever, uh, and he was one of my last creative? picks. Was it creative? <laughs> it was not creative. Mirror. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mirror is lasting forever, but he is. I mean, Jar. I don't see Jaru taking over for mirror or bird ring. Like Jaru is not. I don't think start starting there. It's bird ring and mirror. Uh, will be your DPS players for the Gladiators. And you know what? That's that's pretty darn good. Like like I what I got him in like the ninth round in our league. Mm -hmm. Something like that. So yeah. You're getting a starting DPS player in round nine with, with high upside. Um, yeah, some of the, some of the players I was looking at and I was like trying to go through the tank list and there were definitely some off tanks that we kind of disagreed on. Uh, probably the most prominent one being Elsa from the Chain Dew Hunters. I know a couple of us didn't even have Elsa ranked in the top 30. The man gets points. Uh, but, you know, he, he was either, like, middle of the pack for us in regards to the aggregates, or uh, if he was ranked on a low end, it was, uh, like, near 23rd overall. And I do want to note, like, in regards to the aggregates, and obviously a lot of these drafts, a lot of these drafts were done or the ranks were done uh before we really knew about the match scheduling in regards to the china homestead events and I, I don't think everyone should like shy away from drafting uh players from any of like the teams that are impacted by those specific games here as of yet because obviously we're still waiting to hear more but you know that's still fantasy points that are gonna be up for grabs whether it is week one or week 11, like, we're still waiting to hear. But Elsa's been not necessarily, like, the best off tank in regards to just how he does in game. But fantasy-wise, he's actually done fairly well. And I feel like the Hunters, you know, we, we kind of talked about this pre-show. Like, we've been seeing a lot of stuff uh, where we're seeing a, a bunch of different metas form in, in scrims where there are basically, like, these four main comps that people are running and then you have like different iterations of each one and there's stuff that is conference specific or region specific and the hunters are always kind of at the forefront for that but Elsa's kind of just been a staple part of that tank line uh so if you see him floating around like around six around seven i would highly recommend looking his way would uh, you say elsa's ready to Boom. Let it go. <laughs> Let, Let it go. go. <laughs> something, 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 something. Let it go. Let it go. 
Hey, but I, 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 have, to dis- I have to anyway. disagree. <laughs> like, I wouldn't touch any of the China team players with a 10 foot pole to start. Like, maybe waivers down the road, but like right now, I feel it's scary, especially Cheng Chengdu, since the majority of the team is trapped in China. Yeah. But I mean, that's the, my the take star on players, the star players, I would still take. Like, mm-hmm. you still have to take your G yeah, moves. true, true, true. You still have to take your profits, yeah, you know, stuff like that. Um, I want to get your guys' opinion, and this is a, like uh, probably a fairly late round flyer, uh, because of the uncertainty in New York with the off tank, Bianca. What do you, is it going to be Bianca? Or is it going to be hot? But because like. Right. You could overdraft the hell out of Hot Butt, and Bianca could come in and be like, I'm the starter now. Mm. Like, I am not confident, and I would prefer Bianca to be a waiver pickup because Hot Butt has bring so much versatility to the teams that he has bid on. And even when we thought his stock was going to fall with the introduction of Rollock, that actually wasn't the case. Uh, so I feel like Hot Butt just kind of being that Swiss Army knife. Uh, on Tavis Pass and probably still current at this point on NYXL is still going to be the go-to at that position. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to think of some of these, like, tanks that we're not thinking about. Because, like, like you said, like, you pick up main tanks as, like, fillers. Like, crap, I need somebody who's actually going to play. Let's Let's pick up a main tank. Well, I mean, the problem is, is there's so many diva specialists in the league, and we just saw them fall flat on their face, you know, after not being able to play diva. And if diva could be cut out of the meta every other week, tank picks are scary right now. I mean, the same can be said for really anything, because like, who knows? Maybe not maybe really, that... though. I mean, well, th- like, all right, what is like menace? literally the only. The o- like the only real true one tricks in the league are honestly tank players. Like the rest of them, really kind of can move around between between the different heroes. But if I'm thinking one tricks where they're size of, like way better on one tank than the other, I mean even Ryan versus Monkey. I mean we saw people go from dominant to not dominate just 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 swapping ryan to monkeys so tanks are just scary for me mm-hmm. yeah but you can also uh, like i'm thinking more along the lines of support players uh with like okay what if one week it requ- like the the meta for that week is mercy lucio then you know what i mean like then you your flex support might be sol in that instance or let's say you know lucio's banned but the meta doesn't call for like a mercy and then you start to flex supports like if you're like all right we're gonna go anna and baptiste or you know what i mean something like that i think more so than dps dps is just just have as many dps as you freaking can on the lineup and you're fine but with support i think that can be swayed on the week by week basis as well. Mm-hmm. Not as drastic as tanks, like you said, with like the Diva one tricks, like <clears throat> cough, cough, RCK. Um, Diva, I, I you can't even do that, dude. He, he played Sabra really well. Like, you could yeah. definitely get me with note. You could get me with note if he you want to hit Sabre a Dallas well. Fuel player. He played Sabra well enough to not be in the league this year. I think that might have been something else, but that's you not that's neither here nor there. Yeah, uh, he gonna, did not if look. We're gonna help. talk about D, we're gonna talk about Diva one tricks. You didn't even bring up cool Matthew, or like <laughs> he wasn't even worthy of being mentioned because he was shit from the get go. <laughs> oh, he was decent state season one. Yep, yep. Keep and how did how did Houston do? He didn't play. I mean, you could even put space into Diva one trick. Like, there's a lot of them. Um. I know that's another theory, like another thing we have a worry about with. So you talked about no and like with space even. I consider with your late round guys, people like Elevote or McGravy, where like you're like teams that might not be ranked as highly that have pretty good diva players. Where, how far are you willing to reach for somebody like that in a draft? Because I mean, in our leagues, I think McGravy and Elevote 
both got drafted in like the outside bigger league we did. Mm-hmm. I know I drafted out of both leagues, but it's they're not. You're not taking them in the first five rounds, probably. Um, but they're worthy of a six round pick and later, easily. Um, I think McGravy is definitely a flyer. You kind of have to take that into account, like the judgment of what's going on with your draft. Like if you see, then this is where like you look at other teams. If you see the rest, everyone else already has two strong flex tanks. You can wait around to take McGravy and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, but yeah, I say McGravy is worthy of a, a six round pick at this point. Um, maybe higher. I mean, this all depends on the size of your league as well. Mm-hmm. It could, if you're in a 12 man league, he's a fourth round pick. Like, so, but you know, six round is probably safe bet for, for McGravy. Uh, Elevote, I, that is a scary team. The Justice to me are almost as scary as Boston. Because hey, if you really think about it, who do they have that you truly trust? You have Corey and Aim God. I don't truly trust anyone else on the Justice. Bob's muted. Oh, sorry. I was. <laughs> oh, no. I was like, I thought you were trying to come back. I'm like, mm-hmm. what, Bob? But like, I don't know if I, t- I trust the tank line. One, you have Lolish and Ellie Vote who we haven't really played any form of competitive overwatch in what a year at this point Mm -hmm. yeah that's true uh you know there's there's definitely some teams that are on the higher end uh that we're only really looking at one piece of like the support core uh and you know one of the names that i've seen brought up a lot that was missing from our aggregate ranks uh at least at support was from Philadelphia Fusion and Funny Astro. Now, there's a lot to be said about well, are the main sports going to be taken over the BAP play? Because we did see uh, BAP players put up some pretty solid numbers, but we've been kind of sleeping on Funny Astro more so because I. Uh... Oh, we're reconnecting, I guess. Everything crashed. One second, guys. What is going on? I think we broke it. Discord went down. All right, guys, give us one second really quick. Let's see if we can fix this. I'm just going to mute the audio real quick, and we'll try to restart the call. All right, I don't know why Discord crashed, but it is what it is. But basically, okay, what I was getting at was uh, we were looking at Philadelphia Fusion specifically as a support line. Everyone's been talking about Alarm, but no one has been talking about Funny Astro. Now, we're still kind of like waiting to see what the support meta is going to be, uh, whether or not main supports are going to be taken over the Baptiste role in a lot of situations. Like, we probably expect it from someone like Moth from The Shock. Uh, but a lot of people are kind of cautious because Funny Asher wasn't starting over Maza on the Atlanta Reign, but is this a potential sleeper pick that a lot of people are just overlooking at this point? I'm torn on Funny Astro. Like, 
I think he could put up some good, decent, decent, not good, fantasy numbers um, for a main support. I'm just, it's it's one of those things where I'm not sold mm-hmm. on him yet. Uh, I think he he's probably worthy of being like a top five, six main support being taken uh, as like a flyer. Like he has very high upside as a main support. Uh, you you're I'm not taking Funny Astro over Moth mm-hmm. at this point. Uh, you know, probably there are a couple of other main supports I'd probably take over him, but he is definitely up there and worthy of, of being like a sleeper type pick. If you're looking for a support towards the end, you're like, crap, what do I need? What do I need? What do I need? Take Funny Astro. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's it's uh, the whole Philadelphia Fusion roster is kind of what are we going to get from you mm-hmm. at, at this point? Like, I, we, I even like Funny Astro, but I would not take him over Moth still. I think he's no, no. I like I'm bullish on him, and I think he could put up some pretty good point lines. But even then, you're pick. I'm picking up a flex support before him, no matter what. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Like that's that's what you kind of have to do. But there's more to fantasy Overwatch than just fantasy players. So totem, mm-hmm. want to go into to our next topic? Uh, well, are you talking about the ones where I just beat everyone in the unlimited drafts? True. <laughs> Which is probably going to keep happening. Uh, but just as a reminder, guys, on a highnoon.gg, they do have the featured leagues. Uh, Overwatch League Network is doing the Unlimited Draft and the Pick'ems again this season. Uh, so, as I noted earlier, we are going to be giving away prizes. I know last season we kind of did like different tiers of Overwatch League merch. We'll probably look to do something similar this year. Uh, but make sure you hit that featured league link on their website. Find Overwatch League Network on there, join ours, and if you finish top three at the end of the season, we will definitely get you prizes. Uh, and should I not be able to ship out to you because of where you live, uh, you know, we can also PayPal money to equivalent to uh, what the prize cost would be uh, as well. Because there have been a couple of instances in the past where that has happened, uh, where I can actually ship to the person, so... That is unfortunate on their part, but, you know, they still end up getting something in return on that end. Uh, so, with that being said, you know, with it being open in a weekend, I want to go through a couple of the games to get your guys' thoughts on who is going to come out ahead. Now, I will say, overall, the matches this weekend aren't as hype as I would have liked for an open in a week. Uh, there are a couple of standouts. I mean, for nah. me, for for me personally, there's only like one really good match that like I would emphatically like sit down and watch. Some of the other ones, I'm like, okay, like I'll just catch that on VOD after the fact. So I picked two different matches from the home stands, one for each day, uh, and I'm gonna delegate this to two of you to get your thoughts on where you think things are gonna play out. And, uh, you know, we'll see how things shake up this weekend. So, looking at the New York Excelsior home stand on Saturday, we have the Toronto Defiance going up against the Paris Eternal. Now, just a quick comment on this is the fact that Hanbin is not eligible to play this week in either match. Uh, He will be free to play uh, the next time the Eternal take the stage outside of this New York homestand, since he is currently 17 at this time. But you have Toronto coming into the league, making a ton of moves. They have more of an unproven tank line, a ton of big names against Paris, who uh, is basically going to be running soon in uh, XZI on the DPS line here. So, Ramses, I'm going to throw this one to you. Who are you tipping this uh, in their favor? Uh, when I look at the two of these, I think it's Toronto. Just because if you're just going to go purely in a main tank battle, I'm going to go with Beast over Ben Best pretty handily. And Paris has a couple good pieces, but just it's not... I don't think it's enough to base off the talent level that Toronto has. I think once people kind of start getting adjusted, people will run over Toronto pretty quickly. But for now, Toronto's got this. I wish I could play 
I wish I could even play devil's ad advocate and say, you know, like maybe soon can beat them, you know, single handedly or back something. Cap. But I mean, yeah. I'm gonna back cap, yeah, hell yeah. But I'm, I mean, I've got to go with Toronto. I mean, it's just lots of these are like, like not going to be good games. It's unfortunate. Well, at least the next Eternal game, uh, at least on paper, looks like it could be closer, just based on the fact that Spitfire have been running two different squads in scrims. Uh, so maybe they'll have an A and a B team, similar to what the Dynasty did this past season. Uh, so on Sunday, we do have that Battle of EU London versus Paris. And Ed, I know you and I have a bet specifically around London Spitfire. Uh, but, you know, this is a match of kind of like the unknown and a match for EU supremacy, at least team wise. Who are you thinking on this one? Um, I am going to go Paris on this one. Um, I, I think Paris might be able to pull this one out. Um, I, I just I, I'm not sold on the Spitfire and I've made that very clear on every show I've done I am not sold on the Spitfire as a team I think Glister's very good but I don't think he's gonna like their support line in, in London is just is, is just real bad just just real bad. Uh, and I mean, I don't dislike the support line that Paris has in, in Cruz and, and Gray. Um, so, you know, I, I think Paris will probably end up taking this one. I don't see Paris going 0-2. And, and I think they'll probably lose to the Defiant day one. Mm -hmm. So I think they'll end up going 1-1 one one here. Bob, what about you? Oh, oh, I'm on. Okay, my bad. Uh... Yeah, dude, I don't know anything about London. Like, London is such a wild card. Like, I think this actually could be an actual, like Totem said, an actual good game because there's just a lot of unknowns here and they don't know a lot about each other as well. And it's going to, that's probably one of the more in, interesting games to, to watch for sure. Mm -hmm. But I don't even know. I'll say Paris. Yeah, the, the thing I like in this case, at least for London, is the fact that, you know, I, I kind of see parallels to Hunters this past season. No one really knew what to expect from the Hunters at the time, and the way that they were doing things really was off-kilter and away from the norm. And London's been doing something similar, at least, uh, you know, in their scrim. So I, I don't know if that's going to mirror the success that the Hunters saw to a degree, or if it's just going to be... Uh, London sink in at, before they can even get their feet on the ground at this point. But I, I'm excited for that one in particular, at least on uh, the New York side of things. But Dallas does have the other homestand series this weekend. And we have an intriguing like top eight match uh, on Saturday between the LA Gladiators and the Vancouver Titans. Two teams that a lot of people have in the top eight. A lot of people are pegging titans as a potential top three uh as on the high end titan boo boo this man thank you <laughs> bob's laughing but he's a boomer so i don't know if that that's good he's or is he boomer. Yeah, exactly. okay boomer <laughs> so we <Okay>, got boomer. <laughs> we have a new gladiators tank line a new gladiators dps line sport lines still stay the same and you know we have the uh the fisher effect coming into play against his former team uh another time it seems to open like every single season uh so Rams, i'm gonna throw this one to you because this one definitely could have some upset potential here based off of how well the gladiators have done season to season. So I want the gladiators to win this because I'm always hyped to see Fisher lose. However, um, look at Z. Oh, I like your pose. Ed. Uh, <laughs> I just, I think it's too early. We don't, I don't think bird ring is going to be quite back in peak form. I think mirror might have a little bit of a rough like start. And then, I like again. Gladiators have high peaks, but I think Vancouver's just going to come out there and they're going to really take it to them. I think it'll be decently close, but I think it's going to be three to Vancouver. Just to play devil's advocate, I'm going to go with Gladiators. 
Um, I think it really, this is like a 60-40 chance. Like, it really, it could go anywhere. Uh, I think the Gladiators could surprise. If Birdring and Mirror actually perform well, I say the Gladiators take them. Um, just because I, I love Haxel. I don't know what they're going to do as the second DPS for the Titans. Um, who's if, if it's going to be Seum and Sue or Stitch or or what's going on there? Um, they're very comparable support lines. They they truly are. Uh, you have probably fairly even well even uh, flex tanks. Your your main tanks with Fisher being out of the league for so long probably pretty even. So it's going to come down to if Birdring and Mir can actually perform pretty well. So, you know, just for devil advocate, I'll go with Gladiators 3-2 because I don't want to agree with Ramsey's. <laughs> well, to uh, to close out the weekend at the Dallas Homestand event, you have the reigning champions, the San Francisco Shock, going up against the whole team of the Dallas Fuel. And Bob, you know, you, you are the resonant Fuel fan here. Uh, this is probably not the way you want to close out uh, at least a homestand event, but is this like a puncher's chance situation for Dallas, or is there more to it than this? I'd, I'd say um, I'm going to give an unpopular opinion, and it's really got nothing to do with Homer, but I think there's a good chance Dallas could upset San, San Francisco in the first week. It's oh, just, Ed, it's home take. field. Ed, this take. Home field advantage. We're going to get to see. If Dallas wins, everyone is going to have to shut their mouths about how home field doesn't matter and yada, yada, yada. I mean, it's definitely a chance. Jane and Arrow do have big, uh, big brings. I think the better team is definitely San Francisco, but San Francisco is going to get booed for the first time. I don't and that could have a little uh, that could have a little effect on your psyche. I think they're going to get booed a little bit. I think that you're still uh, going to have a decent amount of San Francisco fans. Dude, there. you have not been to a Dallas homestand. I know there's only been one, but I mean, it wasn't even it was barely Houston representative. Like there was like maybe ten, maybe if you push it, fifteen percent of the people uh, with with Houston stuff on, but I guarantee you five to seven of them changed jerseys to Dallas when Dallas came out. I mean, they weren't even true, true fans. Like you should have seen this arena. It was out of this world. So if they have that same type of, of boo that the, the value got, that's going to get in their heads early and we'll see. Although with Ryan back in the meta freaking, Super's back, so I think the more likely thing is for San Francisco to win, but yeah, do not count Dallas out. This is definitely a chance. I'm thinking San Francisco 3-1. I think just because I don't think Dallas has... When we look at San Francisco, San Francisco has, I would say, top five people in every single rank, at every single position. Does Dallas not maintain? I, I, I mean, I'm sorry. I would have to say if Reinhardt's played, Super is top uh, top five. But that's very specific, though. If this, this one player is be, if this one character, but is we're talking played. about week one, and Ryan's going to get played. I, I could so I agree that I can see the live crowd being a very big deal and being a very big factor, and I think they definitely take a map off of them. Especially because it's a different meta, but I just don't. I don't see a world in which San Francisco doesn't win by at least two maps or more. Yeah, I mean, I can't really argue too much with you. I'm just, I'm just saying, there's definitely a chance. It's not like end of the year last year. Like mm -hmm. there wouldn't be a chance in hell Dallas mm -hmm. would win. But this being week one, nobody's seeing anything. Surprise factors. Everybody cheering Dallas, everybody booing San Francisco. I mean, it's going to be like, there's not going to be a lot of San Francisco fans that travel to Dallas to uh, to go to it. And 
as far as I remember, I maybe saw three San Francisco jerseys in total in the 4,400 people that were at the Dallas homestand. So, but I mean, granted, I don't think they played that weekend. So maybe, you know, maybe I'm off, but I think it's definitely a chance. All right, so on that note, Edinar, I do know you have another podcast to get to, so if you want to dip out whenever, by all means. Uh, but we are going to close out the show for tonight because we are getting to that point. So if you guys want to help us out, the best thing to do is to head over to iTunes and write us a review. Let us know how we're doing. Obviously, now that the season is getting underway, uh, we're going to restructure, restructure the segments just a little bit to help you guys out more since you know draft season will be... Uh, pass us at that point so uh, we might start taking a look again at player uh, point cost in regards to daily fantasy overwatch league uh, we'll continue to talk pickums maybe even bring back the unlimited draft to help you guys out on a week to week there uh, but you know outside of that I want to thank everyone again for joining us tonight uh, but Bob why don't you go ahead and let our listeners know how they can find some additional content to consume now that the season is getting underway here Bobby muted. Bobby. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. Take two. Click. Overwatch <laughs> Recall. You you can find a listing of several Overwatch, Overwatch League, and Path to Pro podcasts over on our website at owlmshow.com slash owrecall. Epi- episodic listings are released every Sunday night. To keep up to date with the podcast scene, follow Overwatch Recall on Twitter at OW Recall. Yep, and if you guys would like to support our podcast network, because we do have a number of different shows, uh, you can do a couple of different things. We do stream pretty regularly on Twitch for our live shows. Uh, so Amazon Prime subs or Twitch Prime subs are greatly appreciated. Otherwise, the tier one is four ninety nine on Twitch. And, of course, we do have a Patreon page where we have tiers starting at just $1 a month. Uh, so that is the cheaper option between the two. Every little bit does help and goes towards the podcast host, which does kind of, you know, rack up, especially when you do a multitude of different shows on the network. Uh, so for more info, visit us at patreon.com slash network, uh, where you too can join the likes of our master and above patrons, in Blazing Bob, Brendan, Jay-Z, Owl, Kesha, and Agent Life in helping our network grow. Uh, and I, I do want to uh, say really quick that since the season is upon us, we'll probably start planning out watch parties again in regards to the Discord, so stay tuned on that end. Uh, but with that being said, Ramses, why don't you go ahead and let our listeners know how they can contact our show. Yes, sir. So the best best couple of avenues you can find us at email our emails at contact at owlandshow.com on twitter at owl by the numbers and our general website is www.owlandshow.com uh we're on youtube.com slash overwatch slash c excuse me slash overwatch league network and discord.me slash owl and show i see the ed face he's dist- he's frustrated with me but uh mm. last lot a couple more links for the day. Uh, we are a Twitch affiliate, like Totem said, and you can find us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Owl and Show, where if you, can, if you subscribe to the network, you can earn our network emoticon. We stream pretty regularly. We have Overwatch League Network on Mondays at 7 Pacific Time. This show, Owl by the Numbers, at Tuesdays at 6 Pacific Time. Heroes Never Die, the three-hour-long variety Overwatch show, Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific Time. And we do host streams here and there, depending on how stuff goes. You'll look to Twitter for updates about those kind of things. And then once again, the Patreon is patreon.com slash OWL network. All right. Uh, Add random question of the day or random fact of the day. See if you can get it right. Actually, no. How about this? Random okay. Question what? For Bob no. For the day. no. <laughs> I want to no. know. Bob. I want Bob. you to Bob. tell me. <laughs> tell me what meta stands for. What most, does the of, acronym most effective stand for? team uh, available? Assemble. Most most effective tactics available. Oh. All right, mine's way more <laughs> than that. So mine well, actually made sense with the show. Yeah, shut up. Uh, <laughs> the movie, The Lion King, the original Lion okay, King. Okay, I'm glad you. you... Not <laughs> fun, yeah. Well, well, sorry. Um, 
That's what's always oh, I just can't wait to be king. Featured the first ever for a Disney film. What was it that they featured the first ever of? It seems so vague. It will make complete sense once I tell you it. Mm. I have no clue. Elton John song? Nope. <laughs> I mean, I mean Elton's idiot. been a lot of stuff. Give up? Uh, a different soundtrack? In and out of movie? It's way know. more sixth grader than at anything. Oh, a dad dying. No, every dad died in a Disney movie. Dad what? and mom I never thought it was every survived. Mom. I thought it was they every mom. never survived. <laughs> no, the answer is not Turtles Having Sex. That was a different movie. <laughs> that was Jurassic Park. Uh, it is... Well, it wasn't based on like anything else. Nope. Lion King? Yeah, it is. Well, it is, but that's not the answer. Okay, I'm just going to tell you. Yeah, just the yeah. first Disney movie where someone farted. Oh. When Pumbaa was... farts? Oh. Find me on Twitter, <laughs> <Randy's under> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, Come on. All right. So <laughs> you can find me, Ednar, on Twitter at, at Ednar Overwatch or on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Ednar. Where can you guys find each other? You can find me on Twitter at Blazin underscore Bob. That's B L A Z Z I N underscore B O B. Ramses, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at Ramses underscore O W, and you can find my show Push the Point at Push Point P O D. And as for myself, Tumbly Drunk, I am on Twitter at Tumbly Drunk C T R, and I am also on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Tumbly Drunk. Uh, so with that being said, guys, I do want to thank you again for joining us tonight for episode 37 of OWL by the numbers. Hopefully everyone does well in their drafts. Make sure you select your lineups, all of that good stuff. Make your picks, all of that good stuff. And we will see you guys over the weekend in Discord during the games. Take care and have a good night. Peace. Later. Bye-bye.